Hi, my name is Valen Feldman. I built a proof of concept tool this summer that uses machine learning and computer vision to classify and detect threats. This is how it ended up. Threat. So in law enforcement and a lot of soft target locations, notifying the correct people quickly enough often doesn't happen. So I was Googling around and I found that in 2018, there were 23 school shooting incidents with 113 people killed or injured. This means that there was a shooting roughly every eight school days. In 2019, 48 officers were killed in the line of duty, of which 44 were killed with a firearm. Six of the 48 were killed conducting routine traffic stops. At traffic stops, there are cameras, which got me wondering if there were a way to use those cameras to give officers an extra fraction of a second to avoid getting shot and notify dispatch. The goal is to use computational vision tools with cameras and computers in an automated fashion and recognize a generalized assortment of weapons. If we have an approach that combines a computer and a person, then we can have the benefits of both. A computer can monitor a massive number of cameras, and if something suspicious comes up, it can show a person who can verify it and react. This means that the person doesn't get fatigued, but you can also monitor a massive number of cameras. A neural network is a computational tool inspired by the neurons in our brain. It takes in data from a number of sources and combines this information into an output signal. By assembling these computational neurons into a complex configuration, we can use it to accomplish interesting tasks. In our case, we're interested in building classifiers with supervised learning. What the network does is it decomposes the raw pixels of an image into data that is fed into many internal layers. These layers are trained to recognize features of the various types of classes that we want to classify. For example, pixel regions that look fur-like might activate some internal neurons that correspond with fur. These networks are typically very large and computationally expensive. Internally, these networks do a huge amount of linear algebra and can be parallelized and optimized on GPUs. GPUs are graphical processing units, which were originally designed for handling graphics of modern games. This type of math is the same as can be found in other areas, including neural networks. GPUs can have thousands of processing cores, which allows for massively parallelized algorithms to attain very high throughput. My procedure was to train a custom dataset using YOLO v3 and do so by following Quang Wen's tutorial with a few modifications. Then I needed to get heavyweight compute resources, so I used Google Colab environment because they have powerful GPUs. Then I needed data to train on, so I used OID's online database as well as Google Images and then annotated them using Label IMG. As an item becomes smaller in an image, fewer pixels are used to represent that item. Eventually, there will be too few pixels to derive any meaning from the image. For example, here we see a gun represented with several pixels, but then as you get further away it starts to pixelate and at some point it's no longer a gun. I applied my classifier to see what it thought and it turns out that 16 is the last gun in the image. After that, it becomes too pixelated to recognize. The following videos will explore how well my classifier does at classifying objects in a video stream. If you look carefully, you might see person change to shooting pose. Also notice when it recognizes handguns and rifles. There's a classification every frame, so it might be helpful to slow down a little bit to see each frame better. I have a series of videos, and the first one's a control where I walk in front of the camera without carrying anything. This first video, you see the original video in the top left, in the bottom left is an abs diff of neighboring frame over frame. I then applied the classification tool on this abs diff frame. The classifier was not trained to handle this type of input, but it was an experiment that has some interesting results. In the bottom right, I used some OpenCV tools to try to recognize regions where there was motion and generate contours that I could overlay in the original video, which you can see in the top right. This next video is the same as the first video, except I picked fixed regions to digitally zoom in. Since they are fixed regions, they don't track the motion, yet they provide a framework to explore how focusing our attention to different regions can modify the classifications that take place.
next two videos show a case where my dad and I try to emulate a traffic stop that escalates into a dangerous situation. This situation was simulating a fatal traffic stop where the officer was shot by the driver as the officer walked behind the car. This project would only be useful if you could notify people in real time, so as a proof of concept I had an audio file play every time it detected a threat. 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 In this slide we can see the concept of handgun is fairly well generalized. Old muskets all the way up to modern handguns get correctly classified. This next slide shows how we can distinguish between mobile phones, handguns, knives, and remotes. This is all using the one classifier I trained. It's good to see these objects get classified correctly because they could all show up in a person's hand in a similar way, even though all we care about is handguns. The center of the picture is a neat example of where something could get misclassified. The fish does look kind of knife-like, but it doesn't get classified as a knife. This next image shows how we can classify a shooting pose. Sometimes it's able to detect a shooting pose and a weapon, but other times it's only able to get one. It's also interesting to see it ignore fishermen and delivery trucks. This is a good sign because it suggests that they haven't overtrained the network and are misclassifying objects. This next set of images is a good example of what some of the shortcomings are of having too few classes trained. We can see that the classifier did correctly classify all the dogs and cats, but I blacked out the last two images for a reason. So what do you think happens when you train a classifier on only two types of animals, dogs and cats, and you show it something that is an animal but it's not a dog or a cat? It turns out that it classifies it as either a dog or cat. If you look at the skunk, it's a dog and a cat. I it guess its tail is cat-like and the skunk looks like a dog. And the bird is somehow a dog. For future directions, more training and more annotated images would improve the quality of the detector. Also, using motion detection to zoom in on important regions of the image would improve the quality of the detector. Looking at AppStiff for motion region detection has proven itself to be an interesting approach to detect objects using the temporal changes instead of just recognizing the item in an image. Although my results aren't perfect, they serve as a proof of concept for a potentially fruitful path to getting early notification on threats on soft targets like schools, government buildings, and places of worship. In addition, using this technology in law enforcement dash cams could both notify the officer of threats as well as notify dispatch of threats on the officer. I'd like to thank a number of people and organizations. First, I'd like to thank Quang Wen for his tutorial. With a few modifications, I was able to get myself up and running with a basic collab environment. I'll include a link to his page below. It was pretty helpful. Also, I'd like to thank Carson Green for his helpful insights and conversations around this topic. I'd also like to thank the Darknet and OpenCV communities for supporting such great open tools to allow a young student like myself the opportunity to explore computational vision. I'm also appreciative of the OID Online Annotated Image Database. They had a number of classes that I needed to train on, and their data saved me a lot of annotation time. Similarly, Label IMG team provided a great set of tools for the custom classes I included. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I appreciate any feedback you can leave in the comments below.